Welcome to Keep, Keep Snacking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm Lauren Jones. I'm Simona Roy. And we're here to talk about all things snacks. We love snacks. 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 We love snacks. We love food. Yeah. But snacks is like, could be like a gourmet meal in a bite size. Yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about with food. So honestly, it's about us paring it down a little bit with talking about snacks. But really, it, it runs the gambit. And in a pandemic, snacks is what's up. It's all I live for. I mean, you know, every every day I feel like I'm ordering something off of Amazon in bulk. Plus grocery stores in general, first of all, thank you all the grocery workers. Frontline people. You guys are frontline people. They are frontline people. They didn't have a break the whole time. No. And grocery store became like the new club. I mean, it was (laughs) always the club for me. It's my favorite place in the world. Like there see- is a there is a Kroger called the Disco Kroger in um, Atlanta. Oh, oh, well. I don't know the full history. I'm assuming there was a disco there at some point. In time. You'll have to take me there when I visit you. Um, but yeah. no, seriously, grocery stores are my favorite places on the planet, and close second, a convenience store on a road trip. So. Yes, and that's today's topic: road trip mm-hmm. snacks. Road trip snacks. Like, like these like are all the like, things. All these are mostly. <laughs> Lauren's uh, road trip snacks because, I mean, we can talk about our own um, experiences of road trips, but um, I've got one item, which is, <laughs> I mean. It's iconic. It's an iconic American snack. I think. It is. I think so. Um, I and think I have it, a whole trunk full. <laughs> I think it's a, I think my snack is polarizing, to be honest, um, but I'm okay with that. So I think we should just get into it. I think let's, we should get into it. So let's I stop dilly do. dallying here. Yeah, no dilly dallying on a road trip. You got to get on the road. You got to get going <laughs> on the road Why again. Snacks, right? <laughs> so I, no dilly dallying. No. Um, Lauren Diana. <laughs> That's what I. Want. Okay, well you're dilly dallying. Let's go. Yes. So get on the road. So I just moved from Massachusetts back to Georgia because I was living all alone in Massachusetts and it was zero fun. So I did the road trip a couple times. I grew up going on road trips. We lived north of where my grandparents lived and our family in the city lived and everything. So we often did the Hudson River Valley either over and down. Actually, Simona and I are from, ironically, in a similar area within Mm -hmm. a like perimeter of one another. But um, I, so we always were road trip people with snacks. Also because my mother has a very like sensitive stomach. So there was always at least like something pretzel related or salty related in the car. And I'm also a friend who cares a lot about people's hydration. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> yes, I can attest to that. <laughs> and there was always like water and then maybe like a Sprite or something in the car growing up. But there was always snacks or we would stop. We were like a big like stop for McDonald's French fries family too. It, like how, if we were good kind yeah. of a thing not like not so not thing anything too heavy too because you don't want to get sick that was also a so sickness was a big thing yeah like I think trips. that was a part of it like sensitive stomachs because we were driving That's over the mountains and stuff yeah. right like so mm-hmm. elevation was so yeah that was a big part of it and then um and we're just a big snacker of a family mm-hmm. for sure so I over time in the age of Mary <laughs> my early 30s. Uh, <laughs> I um, have like certain go tos that literally I would do. I drove to New York and New Jersey to see Simona during the pandemic and some family. That was a three hour trip one way. So it was six hours in the whole day. So, of course, I had snacks in the car then. These yeah. were in the car then. These were in the car when I came down to Georgia twice and when I drove up to Massachusetts. Last road trip to Miami. These have always, these are always in the car. What we're about yeah. to share. Um, and I'll just share, I, I'll share my road trip history. Yeah, share your road trip history. So my family definitely took a lot of road trips. Like we lived in upstate New York when I was younger. So when out of town guests came, we would always go to Niagara Falls, which was a pretty long drive. I feel like it was at least Niagara, yeah. five There's hours. There's not as much stuff to stop at after you get a certain point up there, right? Right. But we yeah. always stopped. We didn't, 
like, I don't know if it's an Indian thing of my generation, but my parents were not like, let's pack snacks and drinks and whatever. It was just like, get like my family who's like, we're going to get sick. <laughs> no, there was no, like, and that was also mountainous as well. Um, A lot. Yep. And it's just, we did not care about sickness. We did not care about snacks. We did not care about water. <laughs> we just got in the car, went. Sometimes we had to take out, because we always had a minivan, so sometimes we had to take out the middle seat to fit more people to sit on the ground. We did that. How many when, people would go up to Niagara Falls? You're I don't know. Child. Every person, every person who came from India, we always had house guests. It was an, actually, oh. I'm, I'm an only child, but I was hardly ever alone unfortunately I always had asshole cousins living with me um who were the worst anyways uh so worst. one time we drove to Florida for Disney World and we had to take out that middle seat that middle bench of our minivan and we sat on the floor I was like it was the best time anyways so we didn't do a lot of snacks but we always stopped at rest areas and got like fast food and McDonald's and that was always such a treat a highlight so, yeah it was a highlight for sure um so i think that in my old age my twilight years if you will <laughs> that'd be so i'm sad older than twilight. simona so she is not allowed to complain <laughs> but wouldn't that be so sad if these are my twilight years i mean let's not take any day for granted um but so, true so true <laughs> hashtag real talk <laughs> real talk real talk um but in my as I've gotten older as an adult, uh, for my road trip snacks, like whenever we'd go down the shore or whatever, I would always buy this one snack. But the thing about me is I don't actually snack in the car. And what you'll learn about me through our episodes is I am a food hoarder and I am proud of it. I have no problem with it. Um, it's next and, level. Actually. I mean, it's, it's next level. I have 24 cans of tomato paste and I'm so happy about that. And she's like, proud of it from the I'm proud deli of grocery. It. I can't wait till one day I have my, a walk-in pantry where I can put a rug and lay down and take a nap because that is all I want in life. Which is it's all just, I've been in the last two weeks, to be honest with you. I mean, it's important. Um, but so, yeah. So when I, I end up, when I do go to like a 7-Eleven on a road trip now, I will buy snacks. I will rarely eat them in the car. I just like having them. It's like a security blanket. And then when I'm back at my home, sitting on the couch, watching TV, putting on a movie, oh, it's, it's just the best. No, I know you, snacks are there. You know the snacks are there. You know you bought them. They're still in the plastic bag at the bottom of your feet in the car. And then you rip them open and you feast. Feast. I mean, you can really fill up on a snack, which I think is why we have obesity in America. But like, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think you all. That's also. the only reason we love snacks, and Americans are fat. I think snacks is a big part of it because it it you know it is, and we are, we are a snacking culture. We're a couch potato snacking culture. But straight up, I, I'm okay with that for right now. But let's let's go into your snacks. So okay, so you go this, first. So number one, I think this okay. came from the pretzel back because you know, like potato chips is can be like heavier and da da da. da. So pretzels was always like a good. Well, I you guys, think I got the wrong thing. Because... They're already open. <laughs> I think I got the wrong thing because you didn't specify. I did. Pretzel, and... Not in the text. It just said cheddar cheese, so I got Oh, you got the plain kind. Oh, plain that, kind. you know what? I just assume everyone would always get the pretzel kind. Oh, gosh. I should have texted you, but I was in a rush when I was at 7-Eleven. Um, so okay, so you know what? Okay. Then we're getting two different taste backgrounds right now. So a combo snack, typically we get the pretzel kind. I can live with just the other coated. What is that? What is the outside of that other kind? It's just like a... It's just plain. I'll, I'll show it and then I'll try to explain it to our listeners. So it's just plain, like, baked whiteness it's with <laughs> speckled uh, salt on it, but not pretzel. It's like a... a it's kind of like a circular pita chip. Like a chip. corn cover. Yeah, okay. It's a cornhole. <laughs> it's a corn tube. But I don't even know if it's made out of corn. Is there corn in here? I don't know. It looks like it is. Well, there's corn oil. 
See. I don't know what the fuck this is. Sorry. I, I know mean, what it tastes like. My preference is the pretzel kind, though. I'm going to. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure that's better. So these were created in the 1980s mm, by the Mars um, Incorporated group, which I think we all eat Mars snacks more than we realize. Tortilla shells. That's what you're eating. Oh, that's tortilla shells. Okay, so you were right with the corn. I'm a genius. Um, and here's the only like thing I really found that was weird about it. Um, they were in 2016 combos were affected by an un uh, uh, undeclared nut related recall. So I guess you know mm. when everyone started to be re you know allergic to nuts. Yeah, it was like an issue later. But like I'm not allergic to nuts, so it's okay. I'm not either, thank God. So I eat a combo like this. Yeah. Uh, and then I crack it. Okay. And also people with misophonia who don't like to hear people chewing mute. So, mute. so I crack it and then I eat the pretzel one, the old pretzel side first, and then I eat the side with the cheese chunk in it. Cause when you oh. crack it down the middle in your mouth. Yeah. 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 One has, it's like an Oreo, like an Oreo doesn't always have cream equally on both right. sides. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a two bite. For me, it's like a two. It's like two snacks in one. Okay. So it's like eating a pretzel. It all happens in my mouth. So see, pretzel okay. side. Now I'm eating the other side. Mm, now I got the cheese. <laughs> um, delectable. Okay, I'm gonna try to eat mine away from the microphone. Okay. Well, what I do is I eat the. I guess now we know it's a tortilla chip, all around in my mouth or I put the whole thing in, I eat the tortilla chip outside and then I eat the cheese in the middle. So we have a similar pot process. Oh, I just lost it. I tried to do it and then I just ate the whole thing. I like that your process is also in your mouth like mine. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to hold it and eat around it. Oh, like, I don't like know. People do weird stuff. I don't I'm know. Not I'm not going to judge your squirrelism. Mm, this is so good. Mm -hmm. I, I love a combo, but I have to say, my favorite flavor is the pizza flavor. Okay. I love the pizza flavor. Pizza with plain, not pizza with pretzel because that's too salty. I'm not anti the pizza. I'm not anti any additional flavor, but for road trip, there's something like very soothing. Yeah, because it's like you one. need the pretzel to soothe your tummy. I, I'll be right back. I, I keep talking. I just dropped one of the snacks. <laughs> Snack on the loose. Um, okay, six <laughs> servings of this is equal to 130 calories. Wait, six servings is 130? No. Oh, I'm sorry. It has about, <laughs> I'm reading this totally wrong. One serving is about nine pieces, which is equal to 130 calories in mine. Okay, this one's I a little more. Does, mine is, the plain one is nine pieces equal to 140 calories. Okay. What was well, your six pieces? Nine to 130. Oh, okay, so yours is 10 calories less. Interesting. Um, well, that, that was fantastic. Yeah, it was awesome. But this, I feel like, well, if I'm hungry, but I'm like, don't want to stop, or I feel like I just like need something salty, it satisfies that. Yeah. And this now, is all, the one that's not um, pretzel is salty too. Like, because yeah. you can see the salt on top of it. Yeah. Well, and the inside of it is, I mean, that che whatever cheese whiz we're eating in the middle of that, it's straight up salty. You know what it reminds me of? Um, I don't know if you had this in school. Like when I was in upstate New York in like elementary school, they gave us like snack time and you always got those crackers with the cheese in the middle. Oh, and they came the yellow like ones? No, or the crackers were not yellow. I'm not talking about like Keebler. Maybe it is Keebler. You know those Keebler snacks? But it's like, I didn't like the yellow. It was the like yellow almost, had peanut butter. Yeah, it was, or we should say it was orange, really. Yeah, um, it was like neon orange, like a cone. It, it was like um, a wheat cracker with the fake with cheese. The cheese. It I was, know, and it was a little more like an octagon shape or a circle. Nope, <laughs> I did not like it. I loved it. Because I but feel like the what? wheat cracker is a little sweet. The cheese we should probably fake. we should do like school snacks because we did do that too. Mm -hmm. I liked the ones with the cheese in the again straight up cheese. I don't know what this was. Cheese in the container and the crackers here, like the townhouse crackers. Yeah. And you wiped the cheese. Oh yeah. yeah had, like yeah. the red stick. Yeah. Uh, I liked. I like more of a powdery cheese 
fake. See, I like something that's just you like more spreadable, spreadable, cheese. homogenous. Yeah, I like to feel like I'm at a dinner party when I'm okay. in fifth grade. <laughs> nice. Oh, snack time! Let me pull out the spreadable cheese. <laughs> Where's my cheese spread? Can we okay. open your next snack? Well, that I'm I'll parched? go to this because, okay. yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. So this is Smart Water, guys. Smart Water is 10. I used to be nuts about Smart Water. Well, I think Simona should share the story about one of the first times she went to my apartment when I was living in Hell's Kitchen. Because mm-hmm. I, okay. I order my groceries in, especially when I'm living in like a big city like New York. So... This is this is when Lauren and I really started getting close. So I didn't really know her to the extent that I know her now. Um, so I went to our apartment in New York, which ha- had a it was a corner <laughs> apartment. So it had like spectacular views, like on the west side in Hell's Kitchen, very bougie, beautiful. And and then I walk in and she's like, "Oh, do you want something to drink?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And then she opens her fridge and it is like a fucking car. Kardashian bougie fridge with just bottles of like smart water. Like, I, were there other types of water? I just remember seeing Sometimes like bottles of water. Small, so I would have the big smart waters. Today I have a smaller smart water, but I have the big ones. And then I would do, I liked carrying the small Fiji, like the squid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we had. And then at my I job. would also do glass like lemonade. I really liked lemonade. <laughs> And I was just like, what? I mean, I was, I've never seen a real person's fridge like that. So that was magnificent. And I'll, I've never forgotten it. And it's goals. I was just, I want a beverage fridge along with my walk-in pantry. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I'm lucky my family, like I grew up that way. Mm-hmm. Speaking of my family is destroying the floor in a room downstairs. So if you're hearing that banging. I do hear a little banging, but you know what? It's life. It is. It's pandemic life. This but I'm podcast just letting you know, is real. It's real. This is all in real time. Um, so if you hear the banging, that's so what it is. My question to you is why Smart Water? Because I like Smart Water, I, but then I watched that Zac Efron show. Did you watch it or you were like, I'm not into I it? I couldn't get into it. Okay. So there was, there's a great episode about water. And basically like the, one of this, this water expert was like anything that is like filtered or extra filtered or distilled or whatever, that is like boiling off all of the natural nutrients in your, um, in your water. So like the minerals that we have naturally from like spring water and stuff, we're supposed to have it because that's what replenishes it replenishes the minerals in our body but when you put in water actually that is without those minerals it actually sucks out the minerals from your body yeah i believe that i'm sure yeah and but also this does taste good and this is what vapor distilled water and electrolytes for taste so i guess it's giving you some electrolytes and it's and also purely made, balanced ph and it's made by coke Whatever the so like is. right so who knows you know it came out in 20 oh no it was introduced in 1996 but by 2016 it was b- hopping i will say i'm i had gotten married in 2007 and i remember around that time i was stocking up the smart water i also remember like bottle water you know when you were ki- now i use i'm gonna be uh, very honest i use a reusable cup all the time now And depending upon where I'm living and what the faucet water is like, I will use like a Brita filtered um, and pour it in that. So I'm not like, no, no. I always recycle. This is like a a road trip. But now this is like a roadie for me. Yeah. Yeah. And and a lot of times I would take like my reusable cup, but because of the pandemic, I swung back to Smart Water. Smart Water to me tastes. I and I know people will give me shit for this but like it our, our 10 our 10 followers our 10 followers I th- if <laughs> that and we love you we our don't 10. know who you are and you're not there some yet of us, we probably know who some of you are because you're like friends no, but supported. we don't even have 10 followers yet we are gonna after this okay. episode <laughs> that's true the goal the goal is 10 and and we love you so hard for listening to us talk about snacks. Like okay. it's a passion project and you're mm-hmm. into it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just, it goes down really clean. I feel it like does. the bottle is a little thicker than other bottled water. <laughs> um, 
containers in some cases, which I don't know is good or bad. But I feel like it keeps it colder a little bit longer. Oh, interesting. Far. One thing I hate about smart water, and I don't know if you experienced it when you opened yours, it is filled so high, which is good, but it also will like spill on you. I've never had that experience and I've bought smart water a lot. You know, the one that the smart water that I hate though is the the one that has like the tip that you could You want to know what? I never drink out of it. I still it, open it like a normal. It's always hard to open and then you're ripping off the plastic and it rips off your nails and it's I don't just do like, that. I just want some water. Yeah. I Not think I, I think when I need water too, I'm like dying of thirst because I hydrate all the time. So I'm like, oh, you're obsessed. I need it. And so <laughs> well, when I'm tearing dehydrating it up, as a parent. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, what is it glass so? Like this is by Coke. Okay. It's so don't totally get fooled. Coke. Don't be fooled by Glasso smart water, whatever the hell. Sip that is. and scan. Open drink smart water dot oh you can scan a thing and learn more about it. Great. I do like that the, the sentence to explain it says, clouds might throw you shade, but they give us nature's <laughs> purest source of water. Somebody with a sense of humor wrote yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I've always liked the packaging. And like, I remember at one point, I don't know if it was Deer Park or one of those, everyone was like, that comes out of the water from a creek down the street. And so this one had less like crap being talked about it at the time. Right. I mean, so I yeah. it's always, it's like first they demonize one way, then they demonize the other way. It's really hard to keep track. It is. But okay. it is a clean tasting water. So if you're on the road, grab a smart water. Grab a want. smart water. I'm a big and fan. Say hi I'm a Tom. second fan of a Fiji, but smart water, Fiji's hard to fit in your cup holder. Oh yeah. Cause it's the trying to be square. It's like, just be circular. You know, I have to say if I'm really feeling like I want to treat myself for water, <laughs> Um, I buy Evian. That's you're an the, Evian. The, the French. I know Alps. a girl, but I hardly ever buy it. It's weird. It's like I only will let myself buy it if I'm feeling luxurious at the moment. So Otherwise, Evian to me dries my mouth out. Maybe you don't have those French Alp minerals. I maybe don't. <laughs> like I feel like it made me. I'm not saying it's terrible water, but it's not my favorite. And I used to teach back million years ago and I was a teacher with a woman who only drank Evian water ever, 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 and was from New York. So like, <laughs> hello, New York drinking water is like the best ever. And when I was actually buying this smart water, mm -hmm. I went down the water aisle just to like get a gander because I haven't yeah. done it in a while. And they have Evian little minis for children that look like Toy mm. Story characters. Mm, interesting. But I was like, why does a kid need that? Give them a water bottle and call it a day. They don't need to be drinking Evian. I mean, kids oh, today. These kids today. children. Okay, um, that brings us to our next snack. Okay, so this I had to go to two stores for. Oh, the Sour Patch Big, Big kids. kids. Okay, Sour Patch is always my favorite, but my new favorite favorite of Sour Patch is the big kids and, and i have the normal kids so we can do um comparison a comparison in size too but for look people at watching. this look at oh, my top shit. how like that's like an inch long it's amazing all right well, that matches my lip color too wow so that's the cherry flavor so do you have uh -huh. a favorite flavor wow uh -huh. okay these are humongous uh -huh. these are humongous. oh uh -huh. so good wow these really are big kids Mm-hmm. So wait, what was your favorite flavor? Did you say? Lemon. What? Mm -hmm. I love I, something. I like so orange. tart. Tart is like my. And so wait, how do you eat them? Like, what is your? It's the whole thing. Tea? Oh, just go go for like it. this. Oh, this mm. is this is quite the difference in size, people. Let me get a color to color ratio here. Uh, oh my god! Look at this. The big kids are at least three times the size Amazing. of a regular kid. You're welcome, America. Um, so why do you go for the big kids? Because you just want more gummy in your mouth at one time? While I'm driving, absolutely. Okay, because it's like while you're driving, you can only grab one thing at a time. So you might as well grab a bigger piece. So it's like big kids were made for people who are driving. A hundred percent. And <laughs> you eat less of them. Or I do. Mm, um, it's good. It's good. But I also love a good tart. 
you'll also find that when we talk about plain snacks, like on airplane snacks. That's another episode. It is, but Sour Patch will make a comeback in that for me too. But the big kids I found during the pandemic, I also feel like they were pretty new. Like, I feel like they... They are pretty new. They're not... Out. I to go to two different stores to find it. Where did you find it? Because I've only found them at a Target. Um, I found it... It wasn't at 7-Eleven, and it wasn't at Stop and Shop, and then I found it at my tried and true Walgreens. Mm, yep. That makes sense. Oh, so man. Sour that Patch was kids, Yeah. Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids known as Very Bad Kids in France and formerly as Maynard Sour Patch Kids in the UK and Canada, are a brand of soft candy with a coating of invert sugar and sour sugar, a combination of the citrus. What's sour sugar? It's sour Some, sugar. It's something made up. That's ridiculous. Well, I love it. Um, no, it's really good. It's a tasty candy, but don't tell it me. It was made by a Swedish oh licorice company. Um and then uh and then came out of ontario and then like they just started making them out of ontario um and they came out in the 70s so they were kind of capitalizing on cabbage patch kids popularity which was a huge thing when you and i were both children oh yeah (laughs) cabbage patch kids who are based out of georgia there was the cabbage patch kids museum here which is i also was, I, wa- I only had one cabbage patch kid doll and I, it was the crimp and curl doall that you I had her hair. with the purple dress i mean i don't remember her dress but oh, I, I just remember she doing her hair dress. the hair i had her cool. i had i had four Cabbage Patch Kid dolls. I know. <laughs> but the first one I got, I told you this very sweet story, and I'm not going to like go too far down the road, but the first one I got was the night that my sister was born, which was Christmas Eve. So everybody was afraid that I was going to be like, oh, Lauren doesn't yeah. get anything. And so everyone gave me too many Christmas presents. So <laughs> Joby Selena was the name of her. I did not name her, you know, Cabbage Patch Kid. Yeah, they, it comes kid. with a birth certificate. Joby Selena. What kind of name is that? Joby? But jo- Joby. J-O-B-Y. Wow. Filling it. That is a crazy name. Crazy name. Joby Selena Jones. And Joby. I'm going to put that in my list for dog names for when I get Joby is a cute dog name. I actually thought about that Putting when that we had, down. when I had my other two dogs, because mm-hmm. it was my Cabbage Patch Kid given name, my given daughter's given name. Joby Selena? Joby Selena. Selena with a C. No. Yes. No. Yes, C E L I N A. Yes. What a fucking bitch! That cabbage patch doll is gonna grow up to be like the worst. Of she white could be woman. a celebrity, like a celebrity, like a celebrity too. Like it's a weird name, but yeah. So Joby Selena and I, when we went to the hospital, and they were like, "Do you want your cabbage patch doll?" And I was like, "No, I want my sister." Aww. And I put her down. I mean, I did give Joby good love, but Deidre was. The real you could have sent Joby my way. I only had one measly cabbage patch. <laughs> I know I should have because I had so many. Sorry, All right. I gotta pull these um, back. So anyway, so and then also the thing about Sour Patch Kids. Here's the other reason why I like these big ones. This is a bad reason. So I don't eat the green or the blue. Mm. When they interjected the blue, so first it was just the blue green. is what I, like the blue. What is the blue flavor? Blue raspberry. I don't know. Do they but tell I, you? I don't even know. I mean, they should tell you what the flavors are. Like, that's I don't think they cool. do anymore. They're just like, you know what we are. We're sour but patch are, kids. Are, is the green actually lime? And is, I'm going to just taste a blue just to taste to them it. because I don't eat them. So the, mm, the blue is blue raspberry for sure. So, best relationships I've ever been in are people that will eat their leftover. Sour and I patch would kids. eat them. I mean, are you concerned? Well, this is a great relationship. This has okay. always been a healthy one in my life. So, it has yeah. a weird aftertaste. The lemon did not have any. No, lemon is the weird bomb. aftertaste. The blue orange one definitely is the bomb. Does. Red is yeah, the I bomb. Love orange. Mine is orange. And I'm gonna eat this green one because of love. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The green one's lime. Um, okay. It's not bad. It's definitely. It's like if we're gonna go with your ranking. Well, for my ranking, I'll put my ranking. It would be like orange, um, then lemon, then red, which I guess is cherry. And then lime, the green, and then the blue. I would say mine would be the same. I said I would have flop the le- the yellow and the orange. Yeah. But I like the super tart. I feel like the lemon is the most super tart. And also, 
so anyway, so to the big concept, you can open it and see them really fast and not accidentally grab a couple. Yeah. Because I feel like the little ones are just too little. And something else that's weird about me is that like sour for some reason in my stomach helps keep things a little pathetic. Yeah. So like I, so I like to sometimes drop a sat, like a tiny bit. Like I, if you ever go to a bar with me, sometimes I'll order like a maker's with a, or um, like bullet or something, which is a tiny bit of sour mix. It somehow like offsets, hmm. like I don't want to drink like a sour drink and be like, oh, I'm getting so drunk. Like, but I just <laughs> like having that, <laughs> you know, girls are just like too sweet or too sour of a drink. It's not quite that. It's just, or like Woodford, which is mm -hmm. like, like a pinch hmm. of sour mix. It just, it helps keep, like, keep my stomach in check. So, mm -hmm. but I have so to this say, is good for traveling for me if my stomach feels, mm. you, you yeah. have converted me. I now, <sighs> if I ever go in a store and I'm jonesing for Sour Patch, I will not, and if they have it, because it's still hard to find. Um, yeah. If I see that they have big kids, I'm going to go for big kids. Get on that big kid. Get on that big kid. Train. Like, it's just like, it's a no brainer. They should stop making the little kids. Like, you almost just need like two of these and you're good too. Like, I don't need to yeah. eat a lot of them. Yeah, exactly. I eat less of these, I think, than I do of the little ones, to be honest. Yeah, the, with I you. think that you don't realize, like, it's like a brain stomach satiation connect it right? says it's like two big times ones. bigger but i think you're right i think it's i like think it's three, three times, times bigger. bigger yeah like because you yeah. we, i did the comparison and i'm sorry for the the 10 viewers listening viewers v listeners 10 listeners listening that you can't see it but you could always check us out on oh YouTube. and i measured the size of my tongue it's about an inch long. yeah no it was, it's an inch long it's not an inch wide i would say it's like a half a half an inch or a little bit less than a half an inch third wide. of an inch maybe yeah but it, it they're is, big they're tall these these kids are tall they're tall <laughs> um <laughs> these okay. are the kids that stand on the top riser in the school picture they are the tall kids yeah they're tall they're like six feet tall IRL like if this sour patch <laughs> kid came to life they'd be like six five they'd right they need to make player. you know and they haven't made commercials and like new commercials in a while because of the pandemic but like I feel like this commercial And I do love their commercials. Yeah. Like cuz the, the Sour Patch kids. kids are assholes and they do something mean first it, to a real kid and then like when the kid is mad at the Sour Patch kid the it, the Sour Patch kid becomes like really like soft Like it'll cut your and hair and your sleep yeah. and then it'll like massage your feet. Yeah, it's like cuz they're sour and sweet. Yeah, it's, it's a great commercial. But could you concept. imagine a big kid commercial? I feel like it I would think be like, it would be terrifying. Like Stay Puft Marshmallow Man status. Yeah, like, Ghostbusters. Ah, yeah. yeah. All right. Here is the weirdest one. Now this is weird. This is like old people territory. IMO. So I love now snow caps are the smaller version of what I love, but I really love a non pareil. And I couldn't even like find like reg, you know, in supermarkets, you can get those, the bulk candy in the plastic bins. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to find a bulk thing of non -pareils. This is going to be easy peasy. No, man. Stop Shop didn't have that shit. So then so I had I to think, the snow caps. I think non for me started at the first wedding I went to as a child. Oh, that's, that's sweet. And got to eat them on the way home because a lot of times at like Italian weddings, which I am partially, you get, or, and Northerners do it too because I think we're just so influenced by the Italians up north too, is the almonds. Yes, yes, yes. Right? The, wedded, the wedding almonds. The women the almonds. Satchel with the, those are the almonds that are candy coated like royally and you get them in a little favor usually at weddings exactly apparently only on the northern east coast or something you see it more in the north you do because it, it is like i think more of an italian tradition so then i had a, a family member that also put non that were colored like the almonds oh nice so they so were like pastel. a pastel but were the dots all like was it one non colored thing so it's like a pink nonpareil and a yeah lime it was different colored yeah but it wasn't all like different colored dots on one chocolate no it was the white colored dot with a colored chocolate oh it was like so a were pink they chocolate. all white chocolate 
that was just colored? No, some of them were flavored. It was weird. Like some of them, if you go to kind of like a fancy candy shop, sometimes you can still find them where it's like, has a little bit of like a sorbet taste to them or something. Oh, interesting. They like look, taste like a pink or whatever. So I remember eating them on the way home when we were crossing over the Taffin Z. Like mm-hmm. I remember distinctively. And I was oh. like, I loved this. Yeah. And so if I could find a non dude, I'm eating it. So, now, this, so you just like take them in your hand. hand. Oh, wow. They're already melting. So they're not M&Ms. They melt in your M&Ms. hand. Um, and you just take a handful and throw them oh, back. Throw them in. Like they're diet pills. Like a diuretic. <laughs> like, um. a diuretic. <laughs> like Sonia's like diuretic. Sonia, like Sonia's diuretic. All right, and I'm then they sell snow pops. <laughs> oh, I dropped <laughs> Oh no, the mice are gonna have a field day. Okay, well, all right. I'll have to clean that up later. Oh no, Here we go. go. <laughs> oh, I think that I'm um, again. Apologies for me so phony, people. I want to like suck on them. I don't want to bite them. You don't oh, have now to. I'm such you a. You can eat them however you want. But they sell snow caps at movie theaters. So then mm-hmm. I went. I leaned into that. And it's a, it's a dark chocolate. It's not like a milk of chocolate. No, a dark chocolate is actually good for you. Now, I'm not um, saying anything bad about it. I'm just trying to explain to people who've never had a snow I'm cap just, what it I'm tastes doubling like. I'm down on the dark, on the dark chocolate. Yeah. I mean, um, it's like, it's, it's a nice dark chocolate. It's not too dark. It's not like you're getting a 70%, 80% like thing mm-hmm. that's bitter. I mean, it's still probably terrible for you too. Um, yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot of sugar in this. I mean, so this, this dates, non date very far back to 18th century American recipe for frosted wedding cakes. Oh, okay. So this is like, it really does go back to weddings, non It does, which I think is maybe they did their research at the wedding that we had gone to. Um, it originally was uh, a pound cake with pink icing and then the just the sprinkles on top it was also called a queen cake which I mean, oh so it didn't have anything to do with chocolate before it was just like the sprinkles these it was more round cake. sprinkles that are hard on a cake mm-hmm. okay got then it then this chick eleanor parkinson from philadelphia she's from philly um and she was a professional confectionia um started to kind of sounds like she started to make them and involve like a syrup so maybe sounds like they were a little bit more uh maybe more like a hard candy with yeah. sprinkles on them at some point well i mean i have to say the sprinkles are really hard like they are they're, they're, crunchy, they're legit you know? sprinkles they're sprinkles yeah they're yeah. not like the t- kind of sprinkles you put on like soft serve or something you know right and so it kind of, it all came out of that place. And then, hold on, there's one more bit on the chocolate, like where the chocolate nut and pearls came from. But I don't know. I know it's an odd, it's an odd ask to have. I, but I also think if you think about it, it's kind of odd that they're at the freaking movie theater. Like movies, but people still eat them because they're so still there. interesting. I wonder how many people really eat non pareils. They are at movie theaters. And I feel like it's I, like a treat. It's a different kind of a treat that you don't see all the time and get all yeah. the time. I, I'm not mad at it. I mean, I think it's a, it's a unique uh, chocolate snack because it has this really interesting texture of these circular see, hard. See, you can't hate sprinkles. on it now. Yeah. I, I've never hated on it. I just think it's very old timey. It's like old timey to me, like licorice. You know, and liquors to me is like one of the most. Well, and we all know that I'm just like 185 years old. On the <laughs> you look side. amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Sold my soul. Um, so Nestle's made them, uh, makes the snow caps, and it started in Australia. And it's commonly known as chocolate freckles, which is also. Oh, adorable. that's cute. I like chocolate freckles. That's in the cute. UK, they call them jazzles or jazzies or jazz drops. I mean, that kind of sounds racist. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, and snowy. I think snowy sound even worse. I think that those all sound like racist. Slurs. I think chocolate freckles is adorable. It's the though. cutest. Yeah. I would go with that. But go snow caps is, is not bad. No. Of course, America is just like, this is what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's our name. Um, I have some audibles for my road trip in. 
Um, one thing you are seeing me drink, and this is just because like life and general. Yeah, and is a that's Duncan. Duncan, oh, Duncan. What's your Duncan drink for our listeners? It's just a, it's just a basic coffee with some cream and sugar. Simona, we're gonna go to you on your. Oh you know, my my one. And a drum connect. roll with your actual food. <laughs> Uh, okay. My Rocho snack and my really convenience store snack for life is the Monster Slim Jim. I got so excited when I saw this at um, 7-Eleven that I bought two. I usually buy two because <laughs> I get very excited because they are hard to find. Um, and I I've, could not find them. I've always been a fan of regular Slim Jims. And I think only a couple of years ago, probably on a road trip to the shore or something, we were at 7-Eleven and I saw a monster Slim Jim and I was like, where have you been all my life? And okay, I love this so much. I I'm so excited. I haven't had a Slim Jim. So, so I long. haven't had a Slim Jim in easily like 15 plus years. I just want to say that out loud. And it's, and I say that it, I, at the beginning of this episode, I said it's polarizing because I feel like people think that Slim Jims are disgusting and I can't like fault you there. So I bought this. So I'm going to tell you what I had to do because I could not find a monster Slim Jim to save my life. Yeah. So I bought two of the really big ones. Again, I don't even think I've ever eaten a big one like this, but a monster this looks like that. They did, however, at my Kroger have chef's cut smokehouse, oh. which, but here's the thing. It has, I'm going to eat, I'm going to take a bite of it because it's the thickness okay, of it. That's like the, it's the same girth. <laughs> It's the same girth of a month, so, but I am going to also eat the Slim Jim because I've never, I haven't had one in 15, 15 right. plus Right, and years. you can compare the flavor of like a bougie chef's cut nonsense, like trying to be like geared toward a healthy person, but guess what? It's still fucking beef jerky. That's really not going to be good for you no in matter what. In a tube. What. In a it's tube. Like so um, can you explain the, what the monster is? Because I thought it was a flavor, but it's no, really the No, Monster right? Slim Jim is just a size. And it's really just two regular size Slim Jims melded into one giant stick of amazingness. And the way that I Six like to- Six grams of protein, guys. <laughs> like, that's all you need. Eat it for breakfast. You get your protein. Um, I kind of like to eat this like I'm pretending that I'm like chewing tobacco, um, I just like to keep it in my cheek for a while. I think this is because I'm an 80s baby. Okay, let me just go down the rabbit hole for a second. In the 80s, smoking was glorified. You chewing tobacco to, was glorified. As a woman, chewing tobacco was glorified. I don't actually like, but do you remember those candy cigarettes, right? Yeah. Like when you're a child, they were either chocolate or just <laughs> chalk flavored candy cigarettes. And then they also have Big League Chew, which they still have Big League Chew. What and that's is the bubble coating on a Slim Jim? I don't know. It's delicious. It's like, I don't know, pig intestines, like doubled up. I did not up. remember. Um, as Lauren chews, I will continue my reasoning. I don't know how I feel about this. You don't have to like it. It's just my favorite thing. I feel like I liked it as a kid, though. But maybe your, like, taste buds have evolved, you know? Um... So Big League Chew was geared towards children, and that's a bubble gum that was shredded and You're right. looked. It was supposed to be like tobacco, like chewing tobacco. So I don't know what it is. I hate smoking. If I see somebody smoking, like I'm not a smoker, but if I see someone smoking, I like cough really loudly in front of them because I'm like, "Why are you smoking? It's 2020. <laughs> like I don't really understand why people mm -hmm. would smoke right now." But still, I have this like weird fantasy of when I eat like a Monster Slim Jim, I'm just gonna like pack it in the side of my mouth like it's my tobacco. Well, and the size of a Monster Slim Jim is <laughs> fully. Mm. While you're chewing that horrific bite, oh my god, the Slim Jim was heaven. invented by a guy named Adolf Levi's. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh no! I in can't give I can't give up a Slim Jim. I in can't. 1929 in Philadelphia. Mm, and this is also 11 grams of protein. I mean, I believe it. One. It's you just mm. the bowel movement that you're gonna have. He later sold the company. I don't know. It might plug me up. You know? Really? Yeah. Meat just like, goes like meat is like I'm out <laughs> when I eat. <laughs> you're lucky. I think that's rare. For most really? people, it's like vegetables are in and out. Meat stays in your system. Okay, this is disgusting. Continue with. Well, Adolf. I mean, we need. We're. It's gonna happen later. Um, his, 
And I would say a Slim Jim <laughs> fart is going to be the worst. <laughs> oh, you know what's the worst? A Slim Jim Tabasco, like there's a Tabasco flavor Slim Jim. Um, that fart would be bad. And Does that burn like your boonie hole? <laughs> it probably would. There are foods that will burn coming out. Um, and yeah. I think that that one would. But man, like I ate it once and someone was like, wow, your, your breath is not great. <laughs> <laughs> this is something to eat on a date. When you feel like it's going sideways. When you got to bounce. Be like, I'm just yeah. going to take out my monster Tabasco Slim Jim out of my purse. And if you and have no day. shame in doing, you know, the number two air on somebody, get that fart going. Um, Tabasco yeah. version. You know how I feel about farts. All over people. That's what I do. Okay. Right. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren just farts up. Just sit on pe- I just, just sit on sits- people and fart. <laughs> It's not, it's not going well in the pandemic, but it's one of my favorite things to do normally. Um, okay. He, <laughs> so this was in the, so 29 and then he and his partner subsequently hired a meat packer to develop the product and the production in the forties. He later sold the company in 67 for $20 million. In 1967, $20 million was like a Whoa. lot of money. He was like a billionaire. To General Mills. Yeah. Who moved the operation in 67. Yeah, this guy was well, rolling well, with the homies. Yeah, I mean, that was, if it, in 67, it was at least, like, the like We would have watched, movie. like, Keeping Up with the Aldoff Levi's in <laughs> 67 because they would have been so point. rich. Okay, and then um, the operations moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, and they merged with another packing. I, I, the packing of this food is kind of a big deal, which is interesting. Slim Jim is an example of a food product which is listed as containing mechanically separated chicken and its ingredients. Wait, what? Ew! Uh, I don't, don't want to like, read I'm any not, more about that. I know that it is this weird ass food and scary and not good for you, but like, I think that when you're going on a road trip, you're not really choosing things that are like necessarily so listen to this weird yeah this is like so macho man we all know snap into a slim gym oh yeah like that was a big thing yeah we grew grew up it's i think it was always geared toward it's like geared towards men and it's like a very masculine snack and then look at me I think this pretty dainty angel. anti-masculine, like the opposite. I mean, I'm not anti-masculine. I'm the opposite of masculine, I think. And I'm like one of the, the diehard. She's parents. eating the monster version. So I'm going to eat, again, this is called. Oh, the chef's nonsense. Chef's, chef's cut. Chef's cut. So what was crazy is I do think that they did sell monsters there, P.S. Also, I could never open a Slim Jim without scissors. Oh, well, mine opened really well. It's, it's, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. I would say 50-50. Deidre, my sister, was really into Slim Jims, and I believe mm. my brother was too. I mean, I love them. I still love them. Again, I wasn't anti them. They were in the house because yeah. of them. Mm. So I would eat oh, them. they were in the house? They weren't like a special snack. Oh, no. We have them in the house. Okay. No, I didn't have them in the house. Back I just in the day, them. too, the little ones were all wrapped individually. They now still... I think you can buy them in like a box. I yes, think. yes. You can buy like six to a pack at the supermarket in a little box. And I don't ever buy those because it's not enough. I just, I, the monster is the only thing that'll satisfy me That's now. That's insanity. Um, also, the place I got it at had like, in the Slim Jim, where Slim Jims were located, they also had like, these bins with like these in them. This was like in the aisle. I'd never seen such a thing. This is why I went to this particular Kroger because I was researching where to buy these things. And they were in like these bins and they were all like labeled. So like Slim Jim was mostly out and I think that their monster was out. So then next to them was this version. Um, so, but I wanted to say this. So production was interrupted after an explosion in one of their plants in North Carolina killing three workers operation resumed in North Carolina and Ohio after this happened but on May 20th the facility in the Gardner the one that killed a bunch of people closed on May 20th 2011 same day macho man died <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> wow. he and that plant went together all right, so this is very thick, you guys. This is like eating a baloney. <laughs> okay, that was disgusting. 
I don't think it was as disgusting as it would be if it was a Slim Jim. Wait, I guess, what do you mean? Like, it's... It, the it, taste of it wasn't as good as a Slim Jim. Okay, yeah, exactly, yeah. But I can see if you really like a Slim Jim, you want the, a thicker piece. Kind of like, I will compare it to me wanting a Sour Patch Big Kid. Right, it's a big kid, yeah. This is a big kid version. Um, to me, this is too greasy for me to have on a road trip. Okay. There's a greasy nature to this where, because we know I'm very regular, yes. <laughs> there yes, could be do. some massive stops at a parking, a rough spot. But the taste of it is starting to grow back on me. The Slim Jim. Okay. That's good. I guess I ate like about half of this. Oh, okay. that's enough for me, but I about half of it. Yeah, so, I think that the taste is better than these like artisan, um, yeah, this beef one was jerkies that are coming around. They're just not very good. I mean, and that has to do with the artificiality and the chicken mechanics of the Slim Jim. That's just, yeah, I mean, the gross part of the Slim Jim is probably the same as a hot dog. I mean, yeah, I'll eat a hot and dog. I, I love a hot dog. My family oh, yeah. loves a hot dog. In quarantine, like, my parents really, they love a hot dog. Is that normal for an Indian family? No. no okay. It's just my family. <laughs> They're really, They're from really Calcutta, artistic. guys. They're really, really, really They're artistic. into hot dogs. Yeah, they're artistic, so they eat hot dogs. <laughs> um, okay, do you want to do the other audibles? You want to do some of my audibles? Okay. Yeah. This is, this is just purely Italian. Nobody... I don't think ever carries this on a road trip. I carried an entire box that you open like this of these. Taroni. <laughs> oh, are they like the hard um, nougat? Yes, they are. And I've they never taste like had it. I wish you had told me because then I would okay. have bought it. So this is the orange one, but here's the thing. I'm throwing this out as an audible because, again, this is – something that you have to kind of go to like, like I got these at the Italian deli. Oh yeah. I, it would have been Rockland. hard for me to find. I guess. I got these at Italian deli in Rockland when I went on my trip and I bought two full huge boxes of these last year when I was home for the holidays, I bought, I ordered these immediately on Amazon. Cause I'm like, why are these not in the house? Like I'm a nut about these. It's a very, what does it taste like? Show it to me. It's adorable. It's all you need. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's like a, it looks like a square, a rectangle of, of nougat. I see like an almond in the middle. And it's, it has it's like a paper, as... it's almost like a paper, it tastes, it's a, of a paper texture, what it is encased in. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a, there's a something on top. It looks like yeah, there's nothing on top. Super thin. It's like paper. Kind so of. are you supposed to eat the paper? Or the yeah, it's like not thing? paper, but it's okay. that thin. So this, it looks, in, it looks white on camera. Like it, it looks white in person. Okay, um, but you said it was orange flavored. It has so vanilla, lemon, orange. I can't remember the other one. They're like hints of flavor. Okay, but yeah, it is a nougat. I love a nougat. Delectable. It is. I'm really upset that I don't have this right now in front of me. What I'm going to do is I will send this to your house. I will send <laughs> a box to your house. When I grew up, though, these would be in, like, the pizza place. That wasn't even, like, an Italian store. Like, they sold, like, pizza and, like, convenience yeah. store, you know. Yeah. But, again, a lot of Italians in that area. So, and I'm not just Italian, but I will say it's a different kind of snack food. Not I mean, it's, a, gets it's it. a candy. Like that's a hundred percent a candy. That's a straight up candy. It's a candy. It's also like a good tea cookie. Oh, you you consider that a cookie? Like a big square of nougat? Like you're gonna have that with your tea? You're gonna understand it when you see when you feel this texture on top. All right. Yeah. I'm waiting. It's not just like I mean, just like a gooey snicker or something. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because that's what it looks like. Also that's fascinating. It's not too sweet. Just sweet enough. My favorites are the lemon and the orange, of course. Right. But it's just a hint. It almost tastes like it's like been grated with it. Mm-hmm. Super simple. Um, 
Ferrero is my favorite brand. It's usually, when you used to be able to buy them like small like this too, like when you go to the pizza place, like you didn't buy the full like Akutsamon yeah. box. Right. Um, Luigi's, Italian, Delicatessen, and Rockland County is where like we used to get the big boxes. Mm-hmm. Are they so straight? Good. Are they from Italy? Are they imported from Italy? Um, these are distributed in New Jersey. 1441. Again, wait, I have a theme. <laughs> Old people's name. At the wedding celebration of Francisca and Bianca, the Sconti, the buffet featured delicious sweet made of nuts, honey, and egg whites fashioned in the shape of a famous tower of crema known as the Tyrone, hence the name Tyrone. Mm. It's again a wedding snack. You only like <laughs> snacks from weddings. Snacks Italian call- wedding. <laughs> Italian wedding snacks. Wow. Right. And then my last audible, this also makes me like 165 because this is a snack my mom used to eat as a kid. And she found them in a store. She would grab them. My sister, who is a carbon copy, I think, palette wise of my mom, would grab these. I think I'm a carbon copy palette wise of my dad. Mm, I'm neither of my parents. I'm my own palette. Get it? <laughs> live your best life. But they love everything I cook. Like anything I cook, they die for it. I love that they're eating hot dogs and they're Indian. I mean, not to like disgrace like the religions, but I mean, that's yeah. not something you see every day. I guess not. Not for their a shock generation. Value. I would take them to Nathan's and just shock people. I mean, like, do they dress in any traditional clothes? No, no, no. They're good. Some, they're very liberal. Make them. T- Make yeah. them dress in traditional clothes and go, and to, go Nathan's. to Nathan's at Coney Island. <laughs> See what people do. I mean, yeah. I don't think that people would care. Uh, but... I think some people would. I would do a double take. I'd be like, oh, snap. They're making a statement. These are pub fries. Oh, I've never seen that in my life. That is so... making me very excited. It's You're going in and out because, okay, Andy Fair Caps home. hot fries. Taste yes. the, what is the thing on there? Taste the something crunch? Taste baked. the oven baked crunch. Oh, okay. These are very hot. Are they like, mm-hmm. I feel they like. Sm- mm, they smell like, I'm going to sneeze, but. Mm. Are they so I hot? like my butt's going to hurt later. That's what I was going to ask. They're so hot that your butt's going to burn later. Goonie hole, yeah. Goonie nice. hole sour. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, <laughs> is they, it like my, is it like a funyun texture? Okay, they look like French fries, out of a bag. Um, kind of a very thin funyun texture, I would say. Because they're like almost. It's not like they're hollow, but they're very like because they're in a bag, like they're very light, right? Yeah, they're not. Yeah, I mean, it all. looks it looks like a French fry. It has the <sighs> crunch of a funyun sounding thing. I'm and it's like a dip. To try this. Where oh, can I stiff. get this? So. Because I had to go to Kroger to try to find big Slim Jims, I know they have them there because my sister gets them mm-hmm. at Kroger. Um, I can order them and send them to you with the with the Tironi. Yeah, Thank you. I'm very they excited. are. They're very thin though. They're like the proper size. I think a good fry should be like a stringy kind of fry. But like you're not thinking like I'm eating French fries. You're thinking that it's its own thing. Yeah, but there's something about french fries when you eat them. Like, if you can stand, have, like, an aftermath of Tabasco, for sure. Love that. I'm so excited about this. If you, like and it's, like, a alley. good flavor. It's almost like, I could equate it to a little bit of, like, the cheesy taste of the inside of the combo. Oh, interesting. With, like, a Tabasco on a crisp with a Tabasco after flavor. Um, they do come in cheddar fries and barbecue fries, but the original is the hot fries. That's like, oh, and these things were made a hundred million years ago because my mother is a hundred million years old, obviously. <laughs> and she, <laughs> and she used to, um, like live and die by these as a kid, but Andy caps, like I've never even heard them make anything else. 1971. Okay, so that makes sense. My mom ate them. She wasn't super little, I guess, when she ate them. They were more like high school age. Congara Foods. Oh, barbecue was discontinued. Mm. Original. They did used to have an original. They've been discontinued as well. Okay, interesting. 
Interesting. The original tasted like French fries, though. Oh, okay. Hot fries, also in discontinue line, is hot chili cheesesteak fries. That sounds the gross. Butt explosion. <laughs> Salsa fries, discontinued. Cheddar and frit and bacon fries are only in the Midwest and the Southeast. Hmm, I should try to find them. Not that there's something I want to eat. White cheddar steak. What about the steak fries? Were they bigger? Steak fries are usually bigger, right? Yeah, and they're like crinkle cut. Yeah. Right? Oh, no. Steak fries, uh, yeah, they're like wedges. Like they're big wedges. I don't know why anybody would want to eat those. But the hot fries they still make, and you, typically if you stumble across these. Oh, Andy Caps was a comic strip character. Interesting. That makes sense. He kind of looks like... He kind of looks like, you know, the cartoon in the beginning of Grease? No. What? Go I mean, back I've, and watch I, it. I, I, I hate the movie Grease. I don't like it at all. And I have seen it, but it's not my cup of tea. I, like, really don't like Grease. <laughs> Weird. I like, like, every other movie. Well, yeah, the Grease beginning is of Grease is my favorite part because it's a cartoon. Okay. And they sing. You know, Grease is the word, is the word yeah. that you heard, that whole thing. And they're all like cartoon versions. I wonder if it was, I'm going to do research and find out if it was the same cartoon cartoon artist. Yeah. Um, if you are traveling during the pandemic, I highly recommend you stay bathroom strictly to rest areas because they are very clean. Um, I think that they have to meet certain regulations, like cleaner than I've ever seen them. I've done the drive four times, three of the four up the East Coast and back from Georgia to Massachusetts um, during the pandemic. And so, you know, I would stick to that. I never do vending machine at a rest stop unless it's one of those bigger rest stops in the Northeast where I feel like the vending machines are on the inside. As you get closer to the South, a lot of them are outside. And I'm like, who's doing things here at night? I don't know. I don't know. It's like a weird feeling. These are the go-tos for Lauren and Simona on the road. Simona yeah. just dehydrates and eats <laughs> a lot of meat. Well, and I don't even eat it on the road, right? I'm she not doesn't eating even eat any, it in the car. I'm not eating this in the car. What I like to do in the car is he throws it on the floor. A podcast or sing like this one or sleep. Those are the things that I like to do, and then I like to feast on my road trip snacks later. And I'm like mad eating the whole time. <laughs> like, oh wait, I'm gonna, you know, die of, or I need energy. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> hunger. I'm gonna hunger strike. What's wrong with me? Or I'm like, I need energy. But yeah, these are our road trip snacks and Lauren's audibles. That's exciting. I can't wait to try them. I can't wait for you to try them and report back. Oh and then gosh, you throw me so some good. audibles. How about next time you throw me an audible? Uh, we, depending on what our topic is. So I think you owe me an audible. <laughs> We'll but if you guys have any suggestions of snacks, what your favorite snacks are, what you think are the best snacks, please reach out to us on either. Oh, us an Audible. We'll do yes. it. Yeah. You could check us out on Instagram because I made an account for us. And keep snack and podcast, baby. Right. Yeah. Keep snack and podcast. There's a lot of keep snackings out there, but we are keep snack and podcast. Don't forget. The only one. The only yeah. one. So for Lauren and Simona. Keep, Keep snacking. Snackin'. Oh, we'll do that at some point in sync. Bye, guys. Keep snacking. Keep snacking. Snack is snack. <laughs>